Every day you send dozens, maybe hundreds of messages. WhatsApp for family, Telegram for groups, Discord for communities, Signal for those who care about privacy. But have you ever stopped to think about what would happen if tomorrow morning WhatsApp decided to close your account? Or if Telegram got blocked in your country? Or if Discord changed its terms of service and you no longer agreed with them? The truth is that all these platforms have something in common. You have no control. Today I'm talking to you about something different. Something that has existed for years but very few people know about. A communication network that no one can shut down, no one can censor, and no one can control. And if you're thinking this is just another alternative messaging app, you're dead wrong. And that's exactly the point. We all know it. WhatsApp has billions of installations, Telegram too. No alternative will ever be credible unless it's used by a critical mass of people. And given that the competitors' numbers are so enormous, that number is impossible to reach. That's why what I'm going to show you today can be a revolution, a magnificent discovery, because it allows you to continue using Telegram and Discord and Signal and even potentially WhatsApp. Yes, you heard that right. You don't have to convince anyone to change apps. It's called Matrix. And no, I'm not talking about the movie. I'm talking about the future of messaging, or rather, what messaging should have always been. Before understanding what Matrix is, we need to understand what the problem is with all the apps we use today. WhatsApp belongs to Meta. It has over 2 billion users. It's convenient, it's fast, everyone has it, but it's also a closed silo. Meta controls everything, the servers, the protocol, the rules. If tomorrow they decided to change something, you would have no say in it. Telegram is more open, it has secret chats, channels, bots, but here too, there's a company behind it with its centralized servers in Dubai. Pavel Durov has total control. If Telegram disappeared tomorrow, all your chats, your groups, your contacts would disappear too. Signal is different. It's open source, it's made for privacy, it uses excellent end-to-end -end encryption. But even Signal depends on Signal Foundation's servers. You can't create your own Signal server and connect it to the network. You have to trust them. Discord, even worse. It's proprietary, closed, and sells your data to profile you and show you advertising. But it's convenient for communities, so we use it anyway. The fundamental problem is always the same, centralization. All these platforms work according to the same model. One company, one central server, millions of users who blindly trust. And this goes against everything the internet was supposed to be at its origins. Remember email? Anyone can run an email server, Gmail can talk to Outlook, which can talk to ProtonMail, which can talk to a self-hosted server like the one I use for my email. No one controls email, in theory, and I'll talk to you about this soon too. Matrix wants to do the same thing, but for instant messaging. Matrix is not an app. Matrix is a decentralized and federated communication protocol. What does that mean? It means that Matrix is like email. There's no central server. There are thousands of matrix servers scattered around the world, and they can all communicate with each other. Each user has an identifier that looks like an email address. User matrix.org at at mario myoserver.it or alice kde.org. The first is the username. The second is the server you're registered on. Just like with email, you can register on any public matrix server, or you can create your own personal server. And once you've done that, you can communicate with anyone on any other Matrix server in the world. This is called federation. If I'm on Matrix.org and you're on KDE.org, we can still write to each other. Our servers talk to each other automatically. No intermediary needed. No need for a company managing everything. And if Matrix.org disappeared one day, nothing would happen. The rest of the network would continue to function normally. The conversations would survive because each involved server maintains a copy. Matrix cannot be shut down. There's no CEO who can decide to close it. There's no government that can block it. It's a distributed, resilient, immortal network. It's the opposite model to WhatsApp. Now let's get a bit more technical, but take it easy. Imagine having a conversation between three people. Alice on server A, Bob on server B, and Carol on server C. 
Alice writes a message in the group chat. Her message is sent from server A to servers B and C. Each server receives a copy of the message and shows it to its users. If Bob replies, his server B sends the message to A and C, and so on. Each server maintains a synchronized copy of the conversation. This means that no server has control of the chat. They're all equal. If server A crashes, Bob and Carol can continue talking to each other. And when A comes back online, it will recover the lost messages and resynchronize. This is the true power of decentralization. But there's more. Matrix supports end-to-end -end encryption by default. It uses two protocols called OLM and MIGOLM, based on the double ratchet algorithm, the same as Signal. This means that even if messages pass through different servers, no one can read them, not even the server administrator. Only you and the recipients have the keys to decrypt the messages. Matrix combines the best of both worlds, emails decentralization and signals privacy. Now, Matrix is a protocol. To use it, you need a client, meaning an application. The official and most popular client is called Element. It's available for desktop on Windows, Mac, and Linux. There's the web version accessible directly from browser at element.io and mobile apps for iOS and Android. On iPhone in particular, there's Element X, a completely redesigned version that I personally use and find truly exceptional, with graphics superior even to those of mainstream apps. Element is complete, modern, and reminds you of a mix between Telegram and Discord. It has direct and group chats, public rooms just like Telegram channels where you can join discussions on any topic, group voice and video calls, file sharing without particular limits, and especially automatic end-to-end -end encryption that activates by default for all private conversations. But Element is not the only client. Since Matrix is an open protocol, anyone can create a compatible client. And there are really many, each with different features. Fluffy Chat is lighter than Element, perfect for less powerful mobile devices, with a minimal and intuitive interface. Shieldy Chat is a fork of Element, so practically identical but with some improvements in the user interface and some extra functions. Naco is a native desktop client, very fast because it's written in C++, ideal if you want something lean and performant. Cine is a modern web client with an aesthetic very similar to Discord, perfect if you're coming from that platform. Fractal is developed by the GNOME team, perfectly integrated with the Linux desktop environment. And then there's Hydrogen, Ultra Light, which, which runs even on old browsers or slow connections. Each client has its own style, its own unique features, but they all speak the same matrix protocol. This means you can use Element on desktop at work, Fluffy Chat on mobile when you're out, and Cine on the university browser, and the chats are always perfectly synchronized everywhere. No data is lost, everything remains consistent. Matrix also supports bots, widgets, and especially bridges. Bridges are the secret weapon. They're what makes Matrix truly revolutionary. A bridge allows you to connect Matrix to other messaging platforms. I want you to understand well what this means. You can configure a bridge for Telegram and chat with all your Telegram contacts directly from Element. They continue to use Telegram, you use Matrix, but you communicate without problems. Or a bridge for Discord. You can participate in Discord servers, read channels, reply, all from Matrix. Or Slack, IRC, Signal. And then there's WhatsApp. Yes, a bridge for WhatsApp exists. You can chat with your WhatsApp contacts from Matrix using WhatsApp Web as a bridge. But here things get complicated. For now, WhatsApp bridges only work in self-hosted mode. You have to install them yourself on your server, or pay for paid services that do it for you, like Beeper, which uses Matrix under the hood. And there's a reason. Meta sued. They legally attacked those who offered public bridges for WhatsApp. Why? Because they understood something very simple. Matrix can literally disintegrate their control over billions of users and personal data. It's enormous power. Imagine if everyone could use WhatsApp without having WhatsApp installed, without giving their data to Meta, Meta, without accepting their conditions. Meta would lose control. And this terrifies them. That's why they fight the bridges. That's why they make them difficult to use. But they can't stop them completely because WhatsApp web exists and bridges exploit it. In practice, Matrix can become your universal messaging hub. One app, 
All your chats, Telegram, Discord, Signal, WhatsApp, all synchronized. And you, meanwhile, have full control of your data. Maybe you're thinking, okay, cool, but who really uses it? Matrix is not mainstream like WhatsApp, but it's used by those who really care about privacy, security, and digital sovereignty. Some important examples, the French government. In 2018, France launched CHAP, an internal matrix network for all public employees. Today, it's used by ministries, local authorities, law enforcement. It's their sovereign alternative to WhatsApp and Telegram. The German army, BWI, the IT of the Bundeswehr, German army, is migrating to Matrix for secure internal communications. Mozilla. The Mozilla Foundation uses Matrix to coordinate the team and Firefox communities. KDE. The KDE community, Linux desktop environment, has abandoned IRC and Telegram in favor of Matrix. All their chats are on Matrix.org. Wikimedia Foundation. Even Wikimedia, which manages Wikipedia, is evaluating Matrix for its internal communications. Gematic, Germany. The digital platform of German healthcare uses Matrix to connect doctors and hospitals. Matrix is the choice of those who can't afford to depend on private American or Chinese companies. It's the choice of those who want control, transparency, and independence. So how do you start with Matrix? It's very simple. Choose a client, go to element.io and download Element for your device or use the web version. Choose a server. You can register on matrix.org, the official server, or look for one in the list on joinmatrix.org. There are public ones all over the world. Create your account. You just need a username and password. No phone number, no mandatory email, depends on the server. Start chatting. Search for users, join public rooms, create your groups. Everything is encrypted by default. If you want to go further, you can also create your own matrix server. The most popular server software is called Synapse, written in Python. But there are lighter alternatives, Dendrite, written in Go, and Conduit, written in Rust. You can install them on a Raspberry Pi, on a VPS, or on a home server. And once you've done that, you have full control of your data. No one can read your messages. No one can close your account. You are the master. Matrix is not perfect. It still has some limitations. Adoption. Matrix is growing, but slowly. It's not yet mainstream. You have to convince your friends to try it. Performance. Synapse can be heavy, especially for large servers, but Dendrite and Conduit are improving a lot, but the project is constantly evolving. Matrix 2.0 is around the corner, with huge improvements in speed, scalability, and usability. And the beautiful thing is that Matrix is open source. Anyone can contribute, improve it, fork it. It doesn't depend on a single company. It's a digital common good. You'll have understood well that I'm not talking about just another messaging app. It's a model of digital freedom. It's proof that you can build a global communication network without needing a company to control it. It's what the internet should have always been, decentralized, open in the hands of users. Maybe Matrix won't replace WhatsApp tomorrow, but it represents something that no other platform can give you, independence. If you want to try it, the first step is simple, element.io. Download, register, explore. There are apps for Windows, Mac, Linux, apps for Android, and for iPhone there's Element X, which I personally use and find truly exceptional. The graphics are superior even to those of mainstream apps. Seriously, try it. Actually, you know what? I really invite you to download it because I've decided to create a matrix channel for Utux. There I'll share news about Linux, technology, open source. We can chat freely. You can ask me for advice about videos, propose topics, even criticize my choices. I'll give you a hand with some how-tos. It will be a truly free and decentralized community. No algorithms, no opaque moderation, no corporate censorship, just us. You'll find the link in the description. Come in, introduce yourself, let's start building something together. If you use GNOME or KDE on Linux, there are also optimized native clients. Install them, they're really worth it. And if you really want to make a difference, install your own Matrix server. Become part of the network. Because Matrix is not just an alternative to WhatsApp. It's an alternative to a world where communication is controlled by a few.